Hello and welcome to Gardening at 58 North. So in this video I'd like to give you guys an update on my jade plant that I almost lost a couple of years ago and I've been recovering it ever since and also the two cuttings that I took from that plant. So I'll first of all start off with the original plant so that you can see it a bit more clearly. So this is what's left of that original plant. In the last update it was quite a bit smaller. Basically what happened originally two years ago is that the plant started to rot, a lot of the stems started to go uh, soft and fall off and I had to keep cutting back until I found a section without any rot in it in, to, in order to stop the rot from spreading. Basically all I was left with is this base at the bottom, three main stems cut off and quite a big wound there as well and it was just left with a small trunk and the root system. I was a little bit worried that I might actually lose the plant but luckily it re-sprouted and it's been growing healthily ever since. Now it was a couple of years ago as I say that I originally cut it back, this time last year it was looking similar to this but just a lot lower branches. You can see it's grown quite nicely. The growth hasn't been particularly rapid but it's, it's been fast enough for a jade plant. Jade plants aren't the fastest growing of plants so everything takes a little bit longer compared to other house plants. But it's looking healthy, got nice uh, lost foliage, it's been branching quite nicely. All the new growth that's coming out is putting on a lot of the side branches so it doesn't need any pruning or anything like that. And the only thing I'm going to do with it um, at the moment is actually repot it into a slightly nicer pot. So this is the pot it was in originally, as you can see it does look a lot nicer than that plastic one. So I'm going to repot it back into this pot. It's not actually an awful lot bigger, it's just uh, a slightly different shape and it's a lot heavier so it's more stable. But um, it will just look a lot nicer in its original pot. So I'm going to go ahead now and repot it. Now what might be a little bit tricky with this is the new pot, although it's slightly bigger, it's, I think it's a tiny bit narrower and it's a square pot instead of a round pot. So it's going to be quite difficult to repot and get all the compost and size, especially as this pot is almost the same size. Normally when you repot a plant you want to have the pot a good bit bigger so that you can get the compost in and around it. Having it this small will be a little bit tricky and I might have to shave down just a little bit of the of the, the root system and the, and the compost in the original pot just to make it fit into the new one. So we'll have a good, uh, good look at the root system now anyway and see how it's been doing over the last uh, couple of years. So. You can see there, the roots are looking quite healthy. It hasn't got pot bound yet, and there is a lot of roots, but there's not like crammed with roots. You can see there's quite a few areas where there's not too many, and even where there is quite a lot of roots, there is gaps in between them. So I wouldn't say it's pot bound, but it would probably need repotting in the next year or so. And most of the roots are healthy, no sign of any dead roots, and the roots are also showing signs of active growth. You can see these white tips on the roots, that's always a great sign, it means that they're actively growing. You can see this especially towards the top here, lots of healthy roots and there's not any real sign of water logging you've even got roots down to the bottom and the roots are all looking fairly healthy so I'm happy with that it's growing well the current growing medium is obviously a mix it quite likes and I'll be using the same growing medium again basically what I do for most of my jade plants is I just have a mixture of multi-purpose compost and lots of perlite it basically looks something similar to this so there they are succulents and in the wild they grow somewhere with less rich soil I find that they will grow better in a slightly richer mix and you'll often find when you buy them from the garden centre they're actually in, in a 100% organic mix which is similar to 100% uh, multi-purpose compost. And the problem is if you do grow them in that mix they might grow very fast but the risk of overwatering is incredibly high and it's very easy to kill them. So what I do is instead of going for the, the, the succulent mix which is very free draining, very little nutrients and the plants will grow slower but they won't grow as lush or as quick. I like to go somewhere in between and I basically get multi-purpose compost and add lots of perlite to it. Sometimes a little bit of loam or soil based compost as well just to help it uh, re-wet again because if you get 100% pure organic content compost sometimes it's very hard to wet it again once it's completely dried out and when you're watering a jade plant you want to let the soil completely dry out in between waterings so I often add a little bit of soil based compost or a little bit of loam just to help it re-wet a bit more easily after it's dried out and it needs watering again and uh, it seems to be a good balance between uh, holding enough water and nutrients and having drainage so the roots don't rot. As you can see this one, this one has done fairly well. The growth from this plant has been a bit slower than I had hoped but I think that might be because the pot's a little bit small or maybe where I have it in the conservatory the light levels aren't quite high enough. But it's certainly grown well, uh, it doesn't look like it's searching for light, it's nice and compact, all the branches are actively uh, putting on lots of side branches so it does seem to be quite a healthy plant even if it has been a little bit slow in its growth. So I'll see how it fits in this pot. I suspect I'll probably have to shave some of the compost down, but we'll have a look. So you can see there, I mean, I could ram it in, push it down really hard, and it would probably just about squeeze in, 
but that's not going to be very good for the plant compacting all the soil so I'm going to have to shave off a little bit of the soil just to get it to fit in the pot. Now I don't want to disturb the roots too much but I'm, I'm going to have to take some off just so it'll fit. I'll see if it'll break apart by my by hand um, but if not I'll probably have to cut it with second tiers. If it breaks apart by hand then, then that, that's uh, slightly less invasive, I might not ha have to damage too many roots. But if it comes to the point when I really have to rip hard on the roots, it's better to actually cut them with a clean cut than having ripped roots, because if you rip a root, you're going to have a large wound, it's going to easily get infected. What you really want to have is a smaller wound, so it gets less easily infected. And so a clean cut can sometimes be better than just uh, gently peeling away the soil, if, it's, if, you, if you have to be quite aggressive with peeling off the soil. So that's most of the, uh, the loose material taken off. There's a few straggly roots. I will just cut them off with some scissors. That will just encourage them to branch further and put in some finer roots. If you are uh, trimming roots on a jade, you want to ideally avoid the very thick roots. And whenever you do do root pruning on a jade plant, you've got to be really careful that rot doesn't set in. So ideally do it when the compost is dry and then keep the compost dry for a week or two just to allow the roots to callus over and heal before you then start watering. Otherwise, you're going to have a risk of rot and the plant dying. So I'll just check this again. As you can see, it still doesn't really fit inside the pot. So I need to try and get some more of these sides down a little bit. Um, I'll try and get the sides down a bit evenly if I can. Um, so you can see this bit over here, that's very close to the edge of the trunk. I don't want to take much more off that side. If I'm going to take anything off the side, it'll be the side where there's a bit more compost around the trunk. So, so it stays nice and centre in the pot. So checking it again. It goes in quite nicely to the pot now, so I'm ready to start filling it up with soil. There was a bit more root disturbance than I would have liked. I've had to cut some slightly larger roots. You can see one there, for example. Um, I've tried to give it a clean cut with some sharp scissors, but I uh, will have to be careful just for the first few weeks. Not let this have too much water, otherwise rot could set in. So I'll just start filling it up to the, uh, the correct level in the bottom. So that's now filled to about the right level. I just want to make sure that the plant is nicely really centered and that the plant is straight as well and not lean to the side or anything. And then I'm just going to carefully fill it in with compost around the edges. And I just want to be careful in doing this that I don't bury this, the stem any deeper. You really don't want to be burying the stem on a jade plant because there's a chance that it could get rot coming in. The stem needs to be kept nice and dry. And, and not in soil. So that's the J plant now repotted in its new pot. I think it does look quite a bit nicer. It's much more in keeping with the style of the J plant, especially as it's quite well known in, in Chinese culture, especially when you see all the Chinese restaurants around here and, and takeaways. They often have these plants that seem as good luck, uh, seem to bring good luck for money in that. So I think um, it looks quite nice having a, an oriental style pot. This is a bamboo style that they've uh, carved into the front of it. But it certainly looks much nicer than it did before. Now, I will have to be a little bit careful with this going forwards. I did have to remove more soil and roots than I was hoping for, so it's going to be a little bit stressed at the moment until its roots establish into the new compost. It's not going to be getting as much nutrients and water as it has been over the summer, so what I will notice is the growth will slow down, and because I disturbed the roots so much, I probably won't water it for two or three weeks. Make sure that the soil gets really nice and dry, the roots can callus over and heal. Then once the roots have started to heal, then I'll start watering again, but I just have to be quite careful with the watering. When you have a, a plant and you just newly repotted it and there's a lot of soil that hasn't got roots in it, that soil takes a long time to dry out because the roots aren't going in there and the plant isn't absorbing the water from those parts of the soil. It stays wet for a long time and so you can get a real problem of water logging and the, any roots that do go into that location, they can rot off quite easily until the, the roots get more established and the that part of the soil dries out more frequently. So what I'll need to do is just be quite careful with watering. Once its roots have established and got right to the base of all the compost, then I can start watering it normally again and it should do absolutely fine. So I suspect this will slow down, then it will speed up once its roots get established and then we're coming into uh, autumn now, or at least it will be autumn in a month's time and uh, I'll have to start putting it into its dormant winter pe period so it will slow down anyway. But I'm hoping that the roots will get established before that and then next spring it should grow really nice and strongly. And it'll be interesting to see this year if I can get it to flower. It's just about mature enough, just about big enough. If I can give it a cold period over winter with reduced watering, I might get some flowering on this jade plant. It's not happened yet, but um, it's just about getting to the size where it might start flowering. 
So these two other jade plants, these were actually large branches that I cut off the original plant. Basically the rot was kind of in the middle of the main stem, so anything above it I had to cut off. And I managed to find two large sections that didn't have any rot in them, so I just put them in the ground. And I, I just thought I'd try it as an experiment because I knew I've never tried such big stems for rooting before. And they actually rooted just fine like a normal cutting with. So these are what these two stems are here. Now last year they were looking particularly leggy and I'll show you some pictures now what they look like in the last video update. They're very leggy, the growth didn't look very nice so I cut off a lot of those long thin branches to encourage uh, further branching lower down, give it more of a shrubby appearance, more like a natural tree really instead of having these long wispy stems. Then it looked really quite bare, but then over the last few months it's greened up really nicely, especially this one on the right. The one on the left still looks a little bit straggly and I might do a little bit of work on that today actually. So I'll look at them individually now, see what minor pruning I want to do on them, and uh, we'll just get them more to a nice kind of tree shape instead of a weird straggly mess. But it's certainly already a big improvement on last year. So this one here I would say is the one that's done the best, certainly appearance wise. Its leaves are looking nice, large and glossy. It's growing nicely. There isn't a lot of natural branching. When I say natural branching, what I mean is without having to encourage it to branch. If it's a healthy jade, like the one I sowed just a minute ago, um, if there's plenty of light, it will naturally keep putting out new branches as it grows new stems. This hasn't done that much. You can see there's a, a, there's a new bit of growth here. It's quite a long section of stem and there's no uh, little side shoots coming off of it. And I'm trying to see if any of them have started to do any natural branching on. Um, but I don't really see any, so it's probably still getting established. It's probably because I gave it quite a hard prune. It's still not fully happy yet, so that's maybe why it's not branching enough. Or maybe it's not quite enough light, light levels. So I'm going to give it some slightly higher light levels. And I'm also going to do a bit of pruning just to encourage a bit of, of branching. Now I did put on a lot of branching last year when I, I encouraged it to branch. So what I mean by that, you can see some of these stems down here. I cut them hard. I put on lots of little side shoots. And that's the, the branching that I've encouraged. Then those sites used that have grown, they've not branched any further. So I need to encourage that branching. And the other thing I need to do on this is remove any of that very low growth. I'm not going for a particularly shrubby plant. I'm going for like a more miniature tree, multi-stemmed miniature tree, but not too many stems. So we've got this regrowth from the base. I'm just going to cut that off completely. I'm just going to leave it a little bit above the soil. I don't want to encourage any rot to get in there. So I'll just leave it as that and I can just simply pull that leaf off. Also, these very lower suits as well, naturally on trees in the wild, you get a, a clear stem at the bottom. So I'm just going to remove them. And we've also got a couple of little shoots on the side as well. These are just rooted, probably leaf cuttings that have fallen off. So that's the base looking a little bit more clear. Going around here, I might just get rid of this little shoot as well. And then I just want to improve the appearance and get a bit more branching. So there's a couple of uh, ones, particularly on this side here, I feel like... It, it's a bit long, you've got a thin branch just going up for a long time, so I'm just going to cut it off quite hard and that will encourage branching. If you just knit the shoots off the top, you can sometimes get branching, but a lot of the times if it's just a, you give it a gentle prune, it will just produce one shoot again, maybe two. The harder you prune, the more side branches it generally tends to, to produce. So this one as well, I'm just going to cut it off and cover some branching. The rest of it's not looking too bad. This one, I'm just going to cut as well, but generally this is quite a good looking plant, looking relatively healthy. Um, if there's any shoots growing in on it themselves, I might also reduce and get rid of. So there's a couple of small ones on the lower stem here, which look a little bit odd. I'm just going to remove them because they're growing into the canopy of the plant. What I mean by that is it, naturally in nature, when a tree grows, it will try and put its branches away from the main center of the plant as it grows to get more space and more light. So if you've got branches that are growing into the middle, it just looks a bit odd. It doesn't look like what would happen naturally in the wild, so that's why I'm going to remove them. Otherwise, it's looking quite good. What I will do is I've always had it with the sun on this side, and that's created a nice looking uh, plant on this side. But at the back, you can see if I do it on side on, all the growth is going this direction. And so from behind, it does give you a great show of the stem and the structure, but it doesn't look very natural all growing on one side. So I'm going to put this in a sunnier location. And I'm going to have a little bit more light on the back side to try and even up the growth and make it look a bit more symmetrical. This plant, however, does need a lot more work. I did leave a couple of the more strange and usual growths last year just to see if it would, when it re-sprouted, if it would add to the character or if it would just look strange. And I think it's just looking a bit odd on some of these. So I'm actually going to take out this long side branch here. Normally in the wild, you don't have a long branch that comes out 
that horizontal to the ground, they all tend to come up either 45 degrees or straight or at a slight angle but not horizontal to the ground like that. So I'll remove that one. I'll also do the same as I did in the last one and remove any of the lower growth coming up from the ground or from the lower section of the stems. So that's already looking a little nicer but it does look a little bit congested and although I want a nice branched appearance, quite a full looking plant, I know that once I let these grow a bit more it's probably going to be a bit overly congested. And there's a couple of branches which are starting to curl in on themselves, like these ones here, they come out of the main stem of the plant and then back in. This one as well, which isn't the appearance as I said I'm going for, I want all the branches on the plant to naturally branch outwards. So any that are kind of curving back in themselves I'm going to remove as well. So we're starting to get a bit more of a natural tree shape now. There's a couple of other things I need to look out for. Now these ones are starting to branch naturally on their own. If I turn this around you can hopefully see that on this one here. There's a little side shoot coming up from there. That's a great sign but there's one or two which although they're starting to do that like this one at the back they're just a lot taller and there's a lot of stem before they actually start branching. So this one for example though it's great that it's branching up here there's a whole long stem and it hasn't really branched until that point. So I'm going to cut it off around about here, encourage further branching, and although that will be lower than what I want it, I will let that regrow and that will become a taller branch and it will tie in nicely in the future. I'll do that on a couple of the other branches which look like they're doing a similar thing and I'll remove some of these lowest shoots as well because the way they're growing in is kind of in the center of the plant. I don't want the, the lower down branches having these growths. So we're starting to get there with this plant, it's looking a lot better than it was previously, especially compared with last year when it was a real straggly mess and then when I cut it back so hard it looked completely bare. Luckily we don't have to do any hard pruning anymore. There's one or two shoots like these two here, which I would like them to branch. I might cut them later on if they don't. I'm just going to leave them for now, they're not too long and leggy. If they don't branch naturally then I will cut them just to cover some branching. This one again, it's all growing to the one side, so what I need to do is I need to get more light on this side, get a more even distribution of light as well and get it to become a bit more even. Again you can see here the branch structure quite nicely but that's because everything's growing on the other side so I need to do a little bit of pruning on this in the future and get some light on the other side of it to get a more even shape but I'm quite happy with the progress so far. These are starting to look a lot better already and I'll give you guys an update probably in another year's time um, to show you how these plants are doing. I'm just going to continue working on the structure because they were just giant cuttings and there were stems that were growing at 45 degrees and then I put them up at 90 degrees. That's why they were looking a bit odd when they were first planted up. And so it's going to take a little bit of time for these to get into a good position and structure again. The original plant, I don't think I need to do any pruning on that whatsoever. If J plant is in a good light location and it's already got a good structure to begin with or it's just a very young plant. Generally I don't prune them at all, I leave them unpruned the whole time and they'll just naturally grow into a nice bushy kind of shrub appearance. But then if you do want to affect the, the, the shape of it and make it look more like a miniature tree, you can always go ahead and do that and, and, and prune it in that way. So that's all for this update, I will show you these plants again um, before a year's time just in a general update on all my jade plants, I won't go into them in detail but you'll be seeing them in that in a few weeks time. But that's all for now and I'll see you guys in a year and we'll see how they respond.